So you don't want to put pop-ups on your website, but you still want to gather those all-important email addresses for the potential customers and clients you want to keep in touch with. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can avoid using plugins and create a great-looking sign-up form just using Elementor and Ocean WP's hooks. So let's jump into WordPress and take a look at how we can do all of that right now. I'm Paul C and welcome to WP Tuts, where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites without all the technical jargon. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon to be notified of our weekly new content as soon as it's added to the channel. Okay, so here's the scenario. You want to be able to capture that information to get people to sign up to your mailing list, but you don't want to go in through and create a pop-up or something that kind of intrudes on the way that you want to work. You also want to be able to control exactly where this is placed. This is what I'm going to show you today. So this is our typical blog page. You can see we've got a header, some text, then we've got our share buttons, and you might also like kind of things underneath it. But what I want to do is I want to drop in a subscription form underneath the actual body of my blog post and above the share icons. Now, I could use a plugin to do this, but I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. You're going to need to make sure that you've got Elementor Pro. You're going to need to make sure you've got the Astra or the Ocean WP Hooks plugin installed. That allows us to hook into the relevant sections of our pages. If you don't have those plugins, I'd recommend just checking out the link in the description below. It'll take you directly through to the different products where you can purchase those. It's an affiliate link, so it'll give a small percentage back to the channel while costing you no more money. So next thing we need to do is make sure that we've got some form of mailing list uh, sort of setup going on. Now, I'm going to be using MailChimp for this. You could use any of the other ones that are supported by Elementor Pro. So what I do is I'm going to jump into MailChimp and we're going to go and grab that API key. So I come over to MailChimp. What I'm going to do is going to just simply come in and log in and then we'll go into our account. We can take a look where those API keys are stored. So once you've logged in, what you're going to need to do is come over to the top right hand corner where it's actually got your account name. Click on there and we can come down to account. And inside account, you're going to come into extras and you're going to choose API keys. And that's going to give you a list of all the API keys. If there isn't one there, you can simply click to create one. And then you just need to copy that information ready to insert it into Elementor Pro. So now that I've grabbed that API key, we just need to come into Elementor and insert the actual API key into the setup of Elementor. And then anytime we want to use that integration, it's all set up for us. So we don't have to do it every time we want to add a new form in. So we come down to Elementor and we come to Settings. In there, you see we've got a tab that's Integrations. Click on there and you can see we've got a ton of different things we can use. MailChimp, Drip Campaign, Active Campaign, and so on. We're going to be using API key for MailChimp. So I'm going to paste that in there and then just validate my key. And once that key is validated, I'm ready to go ahead. So we're now ready to go through and create our subscription form, ready to insert that into our layout. We're going to come down to Elementor again. This time we're going to choose My Templates. We're going to come through and now create a new template. So we click Add New. That gives us the option to specify what type of template it is. Now currently, because we're not running the pro version of version 2 of Elementor, We've only got some simple options, page and section, but when version two comes out, which is later this month, you'll have more options in there. However, you're still gonna choose the same thing. We want to use section, and we're gonna call this MailChimp sign up. So we'll know exactly what this is for. We click create a template, and we're then presented with Elemental in the same way you normally would. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice is when we do this, it automatically brings us in and uses the predefined template that's part of our theme. So we've got the header and footer area. I don't want that at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back out of this, come back in, exit the dashboard, and in there, because we're using Ocean WP, I can now quickly go through and get rid of anything I want, or alternatively, I can come over to the post attribute section and choose the template to be the element or canvas, which is going to be a completely blank layout. Hit publish on that. And then we'll come back in and edit with Elementor. And we should find now we've got none of those distractions on there. We've just got a plain empty page ready to use. So what we're going to do is click Add New Section. We're going to click to insert a simple layout. Next up, we're going to come over to the left-hand side. And we're going to pull in a heading. We're going to pull in just some simple text. And finally, we're going to come back in. And we're going to come out of the Pro Elements. And we're going to choose a form. So all we're going to do in here is give people some information that they can subscribe. So we can say, if you enjoyed this article, please consider subscribing. 
Okay, so there's our simple call to action. Obviously, you could make it much more interesting than that. I'll leave the Laura Mipsum text in there for now, but I'll generally just put something in there saying, like, you won't be subscribed to spam. It's a weekly newsletter, so on. So people know exactly what it is they're signing up for. Next up, we've got our form, and this is where we can go through now and control exactly what happens with it. By default, it's just a plain form that will send an email, but we can override that very easily. So let's select our form element. Come in here. We don't want the message. We can just delete that from there. What we're going to do is we're just going to quickly tidy up these names. We're going to say we want this to be 50%, and we'll do the same for the email. Set that to 50%, so we get a nice streamlined form. Okay, leaving the button as it is size-wise, but what we're going to do is we'll just come in and say new form name. We're going to call this subscribe. We want to get rid of any of the labels just so we get a nice, simple, streamlined interface. Now, bear in mind that even though this is looking like it's full width and quite a big form, when we insert it into our page, and if we jump back over and take a look, we're actually only going to put it into this kind of space. So it is going to be smaller, and this is where the beauty of having that 100% width means that we can control it to sit inside the design that we've got. Okay, so next up, we need to just sort of come in and tell it how to work with this form. So if we come over to the... Just close these down a second. Action after submit. You can see by default it says email. Well, we can get rid of that and we can come down and we can say we want it to do something else. In our example, it's MailChimp. So we'll say we want to go to MailChimp. You'll see that automatically opens up a field underneath. If we've chosen something else, for example, we've chosen active campaign, you can see active campaign appears underneath. So it will base itself upon whatever option you choose and that'll give you the options underneath to make sure you can configure it to work with the actual mail supply that you're working with. Okay, so now let's open up the MailChimp section, and you can see now that says which API key do you want to use. You've got default or custom. Well, default is what we've put into the settings. If we want to override that, we could do that from here. Next step is going to look through and find out what lists we've got available in the account we've linked with it. So I'm going to click on there, and I'm going to say I'm going to use the WP Tuts one. And you can see it now. It'll open up for things like groups. Do you want to provide double opt-in, which I would say definitely select the double opt-in just to ensure that you cover yourself and make sure that people don't get fake subscriptions and end up with you having your list banned. So yes to double opt-ins. If you use groups, you'll have options in there to choose groups. I'm not using anything like that at the moment, so this is going to be left as is. Next up, we've got the field mapping. How do we want to map the information in our form to the actual fields that are being used inside MailChimp? I only use email and first name, so you can simply come in, choose the email to be the email field, and the name to be the first name, last name. I could if I want to choose name again, but I'm going to leave it as is. So there's the MailChimp setup. We've got everything in place now. Okay, so that's everything in place. Before we move on, let's click update to make sure that we save the changes that we've made. And now we can go through and just quickly style things to make it look a little nicer. At the moment, it looks a little bit boring and not necessarily in keeping with what we've got set up. So if we come over and take a look, you can see the style that we're working with. Everything is fairly minimal color-wise, so we're going to kind of stick to the same sort of thing. What we're going to do is we're going to come back over and we're going to set up some of the parameters on there to style everything. So for my example, I want to change the heading first of all, so it's all in line. So we're going to choose that. We'll center it off, come into our style section, set our text color to be this dark gray. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the typography, change this over, and choose the font that I want to work with. We'll bump the size up on this so it catches people's attention. And if we want to, we'll change that and make it a little bit thinner. Okay, pretty cool. Font for the main text, that looks pretty good as it is. Let's just quickly style these buttons and so on. If we come into the style section, choose our button. We'll choose a different background color on there. We'll go for this blue color on hover. We'll choose the background color to be blue again. What we'll do is we'll darken that down. We can test it out. So make sure people can see that when they're interacting with it, something's actually happening. The form, let's increase the gaps in between there just a little bit. Give it a bit of breathing space. Same with the row gaps. Set that to 20. That's pretty good. And we're going to put the field. And what we're going to do in this is we're going to set the border color to be quite light. So it's just suggested. And I want to get rid of the border radius on both this and on the button. So border radius of zero on those, so it squares those off. Okay, we're nearly there. Let's just select the entire column or row. And what we're going to do is going to come into this and we're going to set some padding in there. So we set 50 pixels of padding. And what we'll do now is we'll come down to the style on that, go to border, and we're going to put a box shadow on there. And we're simply going to make it look like it 
raises off the background ever so slightly. Quite subtle effect, nothing too drastic. Want to blur up a little bit so it looks like it's off the page. There we go. We'll stick with something like that and we'll hit update. So there's our form all set up. Oh, one final thing to make it all look nice and neat. Select this, commit to style, and we'll send on that as well. So everything is all laid out nicely. Okay, so there's the basics. Our form is now created, set up, linked through to MailChimp. We've set it up the way we want. We're now ready to pull that into our design using the hooks in Ocean WP. So let's jump over to that next. Now, one of the key reasons why we need Elementor Pro is because it gives us the ability to use simple short codes. So whenever we create a template like we've just done with this sign up form, when we come back out of this, it'll give us a small short code that links through to that template. So I come back out of this, hit update to make sure everything is saved as we needed to. I'll come back to Elementor and my templates. And you see now that over on the right hand side, every single template that we create has a short code associated with it. So what we're going to do is copy the short code for this sign up form. Now we can come over into our theme panel and we're going to come down to hooks. Now this is going to be done in Ocean WP, but you can do this in Astra. You can also, if I'm not wrong, you can also do this in Generate Press. I think that has hooks as well. So what I'm showing you, while it's specific to Ocean WP and how we do it this way, there's other videos out there and I'll link through to those that will show you how you can do the same type of thing with Astra Pro. Okay, so we're into Ocean WP, we're into the hook section. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna to come to the right hand side and choose where we want this to be placed. So if we scroll over, you can see when I go down this list, we've got tons of different options for places we can start using these hooks. What we're looking for is after the blog post. So if we take a look, you can see before page entry, before blog entry content, after blog entry content, and so on. So we've got to find the one we want on there. So we're going to scroll down, and what we want to do is have this at the bottom of every single blog post. We don't want it on pages or anything else or listings, just on the blog post itself. So you can see before single post content or after single post content. We're going to choose that. That allows us now to simply come over to the left-hand side of the main area. We're going to paste that short code in for our template. We're then going to use any kind of conditional logic we want. So what we could do with this is we can stop people that are signed in from seeing this. So you can choose the user roles. So you could say, well, if someone's logged in, we don't need those to actually be able to see this. It's only for people that are not subscribed. Well, you could do that using the show if option. So you can see we can specify who can see it. What we can also do is uncheck that, use conditional logic on this, say show on, and you can see we can restrict what pages this will be on. But for now, we can leave that as it is, and we can just uncheck this. We don't need to do anything because we're saying after the single post content, so it's only going to be listed on the post pages anyway. So we can leave it as it is there. So we'll hit Save Hooks. What we do now is we just jump over to the page and refresh that. And if we scroll down the page, there's our new subscribe form inserted into the page layout the way we wanted to. So just to come over and show what I'm talking about, we come to the home page, for example. You can see nothing is showing up on there. Our subscribe isn't on there. You come to the shop section, nothing showing up on there, except some errors, but we can ignore those. So we've limited it to only being displayed where we want it to be displayed. So we've tied that in very easily. Now, because this is a template, we can easily come back in and adjust anything we want. So at the moment, it's sitting probably a little too close to the actual text. So I could jump, jump back over, come over to Elementor, my theme templates, and I can come into my MailChimp sign up, edit it with Elementor. Once that's done, I can simply come in and add some margins at the top if I want to. So we can come into this, we we'll say advanced, and we'll say at the top, we want to put 50 pixel margin, update that, come back over to our page and refresh. And there's our margin increased to make sure it sits nice and tidy within our design. And that's all there is to it. It's a very easy way if you want to pull in hooks and link that up to something like a template inside Elementor Pro. Then link that template through to your MailChimp or any other kind of mailing services you want. So there we go. That was a little bit more of an advanced design tip that I wanted to show you. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we add new content. If you'd like to support the channel, don't forget to use those affiliate links in the description below. They don't cost you any more money, and they do help us out. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or any techniques that we've covered, or anything you'd like to see covered in the future, please pop those in the comment section below, and let me know how you think this could be used inside your design, inside your work to make everything just a little bit easier. 
Well, until next time, take care.